Today we react to Coach Greg's video, Why My Relationship Failed. And spoilers, the health and fitness coach doesn't really talk about his relationship, but we see a Greg to set who is going through some stuff right now. And in his video, he talks about how you should date and what you should really focus on while dating. And we will see if it's actually good advice or if you should stick to his barbells and supplements. And by the way, I'm actually very grateful for Greg's work because he was the one who explained it to me in a way that made sense to me how to lose weight, how to keep off weight and don't starve yourself to death while doing it. So I'm very happy to assist him now with my expertise. Coach Greg, in today's video, I'm going to explain exactly how to go about and get your dream girl. Now, when I say dream girl, you might be thinking, oh, a 10 out of 10. There's more to having a dream girl than just somebody who's very good looking. As in the end, is how hot they are really going to matter? Or is it going to be the emotional connection, the bond, the growth that happens throughout the years? Think of it. When you're 70 years old, are you really going to care how hot you are, how shredded your quads are, if you have a six pack? I don't think so. And so get that 10 out of 10 dream girl out of your mind. Dream girl is the one that makes you happy, not the one that looks the best. That's so, already a strong point. A lot of men have an all or nothing view on it. I need to deserve the 10 below, I don't date. There's such an entitlement in that. But they actually never start to date or approach the 10 of 10 woman because they actually don't feel good enough for her. So the need for the 10 of 10 is just an excuse to not get started in the first place. Also to categorize in women of 1 to 10 says a lot about yourself. And if I actually understood that when I started my journey to become better with women, why so many guys do that, like categorize the women. For me, it was always just like if she's right for me or not, like one or zero. And I also remember when I was a bartender while I was studying and I was working in a, in a posh club. And one evening a girl I dated came with her friends over and like, wanted to have a cocktail and visit me and so, and I talked to her. And after the shift one of my colleagues made fun of her because she was none of this model type that is usually customer in this club. And I remember he said to me, better disgusting than nothing. In German, besser widerlich als widerlich. And I felt so furious and so, so angry in that moment. But then I noticed who that said. A drug addict who has always problems with the women he dated and someone who is physically abusive in his relationships and attracts women who are emotionally abusive towards him. So it was easier than for me to swallow my pride. And I said something like, yeah, sure, whatever. You know how it works. And by the way, the woman I dated was a normal looking student like no plastic in her body and actually was one of the few girls that were enjoying her time and smiling. So the first problem that the vast majority of people have is they are going through life with a scarcity mindset. And what does that mean? Well, it means that they think that this is the last girl that's ever going to like them, that this is the one, that I need her, that if you can't land this girl, no one better is ever going to come along. And so you start to panic, you get anxiety, you text her 15 times a day, you call her all the time, you're worried, oh, is she cheating? Is she doing this? Is she doing that? And all that does pushes her away. If you are secure, you should not be thinking that your girlfriend is somehow going to be cheating on you. You should not be worried about her. Yes, scarcity is so hardwired in most men's brains. But it makes sense. If you never had a girlfriend and it took you 20 years to at least get a date, your brain would think that it takes you the same amount of time and despair to get to the same spot. But my clients are often surprised when they see that you can actually talk to one woman in the beginning of the week and have three dates at the weekend. That is an abundance mentality. Because you don't only talk to the women you find hot. Because with that mindset, Mindset, you actually never talk to them because you lack the social warm-up and the belief in yourself. Men that are truly and everlasting successful with women talk to people in general. They flirt with the cashier, the elderly woman at the park bench and the girl at the bar all alike. Because a man that is successful with women is social, confident and abundant. He doesn't need that woman to like him. His opinion about himself is worth more than the opinion of a person who doesn't even know him at all and might only know him for a minute. You do in fact break up. That should be seen as a positive. Another thing, how can breaking up be positive? I've been called a sociopath in the past for thinking, oh, they broke up? Well, that's okay. Well, am I really? I'm thinking that gives them a chance to move on. Perhaps go out and explore the world and find someone better. And so to me, you should see a breakup as something positive. And there are three reasons for this. Yes, breakups are always good. No good relationship ends in separation. And Greg, you've been probably labeled as a sociopath because you didn't validate the feeling of another person or maybe let other people validate your feelings because it seems you're going through stuff right now and you might like, just push it away because even though a breakup is in general good news they also suck and it's okay that they suck and i see here in this video that you greg have a bit of lower energy and it looks like there's a tear running down your cheek so you might go through a breakup yourself now and it's okay that it sucks me. I talked about my toughest breakup in this video here and what I learned about myself with that. And breakups are good because two people that weren't that happy with each other, and even if only one wasn't that happy, have the chance now to make four people happy. Themselves and two more people. That's way better than two miserable people. But also, breakups suck. Because for a brain, it's no different if the person we love is gone or died. We grieve the same, and to swallow it, to deny it, or to not work through it, is extremely harmful for our psyche and creates so much more new trauma. Chances are, whoever's watching this right now, in 20 years from now, you're not going to be with the same 
being part of it. And so adopting the scarcity mindset, thinking there's no one else out there better, that you have to stick it out because no one else will ever come along. That is your first and biggest mistake. And so essentially what people do is they fall into complacency. They date out of convenience. Perhaps you were shy, girl gave you attention, you didn't think you'd get anyone better, and she's now your girlfriend. In comparison, if you had an abundance mindset, the opposite of a scarcity mindset, you would know for a fact there are plenty of fish in the sea. In fact, thousands, if not millions, or even billions. Think of it. Oh, she's the one. How many people have you even met? A thousand? Ten thousand? A million? There are billions of girls on this planet. And so the fact that this girl that you were with right now didn't work, you really think that there's not someone else, perhaps even better, that's going to come along? I actually like to say to my clients when they fall into the scarcity trap that there's an infinite amount of women. Because even if you go hard and talk to a thousand women per month, you would need three lifetimes to meet all 3.5 billion women. And so why are you caught up on this girl right now that's giving you a five out of 10? You've tried, you've self-actualized, you've read books on relationship, how to become an effective communicator. And so if you apply all this, doing your best, and it's still not working, why are you settling? Get out of the victim mentality. Now listen. Talking about settling in a relationship that is not fulfilling. So many men feel so lonely that their only wish is to not be alone anymore. And they settle then for the first woman that is just nice to them. And they think, yeah, that's it. I'm in love. But they're not. They just like the feeling of being seen, being touched and, I don't know, to have sex. But mostly not to be alone anymore. And this is not honest. Not honest to yourself because you'd rather have more choice and find someone you really, really like and feel good while choosing. And not honest to the woman because she might really like you, but you just cannot be there with her wholeheartedly. Doesn't she deserve a man who really loves her? And don't you deserve a woman who really loves you and that you love? Rejection is not only normal, it's to be expected. Expect being rejected. And so perhaps you have anxiety. You're scared to get your heart broken again. Well, be prepared. That is very likely going to occur. Yes, you have to expect rejection. And rejection doesn't actually hurt. And rejection is not even good or bad. It just is. And it has nothing to do with you most of the time. How self-centered many men are that they think their rejection they just got is all about them. That the emotions that women just had is because of them. Here's the secret about women and female energy. Female energy lives in the now. That's why a woman can be totally angry with you in this moment and then steps into the shower and five minutes later it's all forgotten. Or her favorite jeans don't fit anymore. That makes her sad and all she wants is chocolate right now. Because women are mostly right-brained. That's the emotional hemisphere and emotions don't know about the past and the future. They are just in the now. The thinking part of the brain, the left hemisphere, is more the analytical side and it plans about future and remembers the past. So rejection is not because of you. Just expect that it can happen and you are better prepared to turn it around. Cool story by the way, a client of mine and I walked through Prague and he saw a beautiful hot woman in a business dress walking through the streets and she was checking out the shopping windows and I sent him to her because uh, he got nervous. So he approached her and she ignored him and he came back, collected his courage with his hat hanging but I sent him back and she was already walking further down the street so he ran a bit and he said hey sorry I just saw you and I and she interrupted him and said no thank you and kept walking. And then from the distance he made this gesture of like oh it's over what can we do? But I sent him over again. And this time she was already in a lingerie store. And he got even more nervous when he entered that shop because he was the only guy in that shop. But he went in and he approached her again. And then she smiled over both cheeks. They talked for like 10 minutes, exchanged numbers and met later that day. So yes, you will get rejected, but it's your decision what happens after. Do not have the mental fortitude, the courage, the strength to overcome this. Worst case scenario, you end up alone. You don't have that significant partner. Worst case, you end up alone. That's actually how you really get over fear. Feel that you already suffered from what you are afraid of. That what you are afraid of is now the reality in your life. And then ask yourself, is it really so bad? Can I survive that? Don't be afraid of fear because we're actually not afraid of the thing itself. We are afraid that we're not strong enough to handle it. That's why people that are afraid often say about the things that they are afraid of, I can't, I can't do that, I can't talk to that girl. But you can, you are only afraid that you cannot handle the rejection. But you can, you are strong enough, every one of you. Does that mean you don't have friends? People who are close in your lives, friends, family, coworkers, and so on, the only time you know you're truly gonna be alone is if you completely give up. If you still put yourself out there, you keep trying, eventually one day you will in fact meet someone. Another goal, you only end up alone if you give up. The three main reasons for failure are lack of confidence, too much effort, and quitting. Starting is easy. That's why nobody will give you attention and cheer for you or give you medals when you just started something. Quitting is easy too, but pushing through is the hard part. That is what will be rewarded by the universe, God or life or whatever you want to call it. Many of you are shy. You're watching videos on YouTube. Cold approach. Dylan McKnight walking up to a bunch of girls. Hey, I'm Dylan McKnight. I'm super hot, six feet tall. Do you want to go on a date? Yeah, he says he's shy. Everyone is shy. Well, to an extent, when you present yourself in an awkward or unfamiliar environment and you have to say something, of course you should expect to feel uncomfortable. Everyone does. Being shy is not a problem. That's actually something 
something women find very adorable in men. The problem is when you want to hide that you are shy. This sends conflicting signals to people and they feel that you have a hidden agenda. And when we feel that someone hides something from us, it's like somebody has a weapon behind his back and we try to get rid of that person. But being shy is not a problem. You can just say, hi, I just saw you and I'm freaking nervous, but I wanted to say hello and I would have regretted it if I wouldn't have come over. So uh, what's your name? No emotionally healthy woman will reject you because of this. Because being shy and accepting it makes you confident. So no matter how shy you are, no matter how intimidated you are to strike up a conversation, you can and will get better if you practice. I mean, think of it. How do you know how to tie your shoes? Did you know how to tie your shoes when you were one, when you were two? Probably not. But eventually with practice, you learn how to do it. This is the same thing with talking to girls and having a relationship. It takes time and practice to become an effective communicator, to know what to say and what not to say. Yes, you can change how you feel about yourself. Period. Please, pretty please, do not act needy. You do not need anyone. Let me repeat that. You do not need anyone. The only person that you actually need is yourself. Me, myself, and I. Not nobody else. That's actually true, but very clumsy said. Being needy is what repels other people from you. I have multiple videos about that if you want to watch it. But in short, being needy says that the other person is now in charge of your well-being. Even though they didn't want to. It's codependency. If they are distant to you suddenly, you get sad, anxious, or frustrated, angry. And then you try to be extra attentive and extra nice, which repels them even more. But do we need no one? We are humans. We are social creatures and we evolve to rely on other people. Nobody wins alone. There's no self-made millionaire. There's no self-made man. It's not possible. A self-made person would need to invent new fire, new language, new wheels, new whatever. You get the gist. And he needs an audience or customers, someone to sell his stuff to. And he needed to learn skills from someone. So there is no self-made person. We all need other people and the knowledge of people that came before us. That should actually humble a lot of these alpha guys, but they don't watch my videos. We survive because we cooperated with others. We formed teams and relationships. Our natural state is cooperation and not division, like legacy media tries to propagate. But you don't need a woman. A woman has nothing you need. Also, a woman doesn't need a man. A man has nothing the woman needs. But you maybe want a woman, a girlfriend, a partner in your life. You want to give some of your love to that other person. You want to care for someone. You don't need love from the outside because you never know how much is enough and you can never actually accept it if you don't love yourself first. This is also abundance, emotional abundance abundance, how we call it. It is best expressed by, and I steal this line from my colleague Andy, by I want you, but I'm not dependent on you. Or I don't need you, I want you. It's when you can freely state your opinion, express your boundaries and show your affection. And when you can say to the woman that stands in line with you at Starbucks, wow, you look absolutely stunning, without expecting anything in return. You don't expect her attention, a conversation with her or her phone number. You just give for the sake of giving and to speak your truth. These men, these people are absolutely Attractive. Be your authentic self. Show her the real you. I know many people out there, pickup artists are gonna say, don't say this, don't say that. Never open up to them, don't ever call, don't text until three days after the day, blah, blah, blah. Those pickup artists are trying to attract people with an avoidance attachment style. These people do not actually want a committed relationship. They want to avoid it. Really let the person know who are you as a person. Your values, what makes you think, what makes you excited, your passions, everything. And of course, opening up, sharing details, you perhaps are scared it's gonna give your date, your partner, some ammunition against you. They now know this about me and they're gonna use it against me. Well, if they do, do you really think you should stay with them? And so how is it bad? How is it bad if you give them this power? Hey, you have some power now, but if you use it, I'm gone. Remember, abundance. Serious. Yeah, that's so stupid. If you play games, you attract immature people, children. You always attract what you are. If you are a loving and caring man, you attract loving and caring women. If you think you need to be dominating and show what an alpha man you are, you attract also women with low self-esteem. Tips on how to get your dream woman. And so number one, have standards. Why waste your time with someone that you have no future with? It may not be on the first date, second date, third, but perhaps it's after a month. If you know there's no way that you can see a future with this person, then end it. End it and move on. If you stay in this relationship and it prevents you from meeting other people, the person who actually could be your dream girl, then why are you doing that? Yes, we talked about it already, but I want to emphasize the standards. Standards don't mean that we look down on people. The same way we don't want other people to look down on us. Standards mean that you want to be treated in a loving manner on eye level. That you can communicate about issues, wishes, and when the other one did something hurtful. Having standards means that you don't get below that. And if you've been cheated on in the past and had disturbing, abusive relationships, then raise your standards. You are the lowest common denominator in all your relationships. You can stop being treated like this by raising your standards. Number two, watch for red flags. There are red flags, bad, and green flags, good. Now remember, nobody's perfect. And if they have one red flag, it's not enough to throw in the towel. You shouldn't just give up. Oh, they had one red flag. They did one thing wrong. But in my opinion, three strikes and you're out. Yeah, this goes hand in hand with standards. When you find out that the woman you are dating expresses something that you don't want in your life anymore, then set boundaries and maybe say goodbye. Moving on. Number three, get out there. How are you going to meet someone if you sit at home twiddling your thumbs all the time? You need to get out there where you're going to meet people. So many people are like, oh, it'll happen. Don't force it. 
Well, if you work from home and you never leave the house, how are you meeting people? In comparison, perhaps join a gym, join yoga, go to the bar, to clubs, to social events where you can in fact meet other people. Because if you don't, how are you ever gonna meet anyone? Yes, meet women outside. Be social, talk to people. Just focus on being social and you will naturally meet women. Online dating like Tinder and so on, that's a dating supplement. The same way you wouldn't rely on vitamins and protein powder for your nutrition, the same way you shouldn't rely on Tinder for your dating and relationships. And honestly, People that are not good with other people have shit dating profiles. Because they don't have friends that take cool pictures of them. They don't experience cool stuff that they can take pictures of. And they appear timid and cannot convey anything else than the lack of confidence in their dating profiles. And people that are good with other people and therefore good with dating do not rely on Tinder that much. They are too busy living their lives with other people. And number four, maintain emotional control. If you're rejected, don't lash out. Don't get into arguments, don't get into fights. Don't let any woman affect you emotionally to that extent. You need to play cool, you need to be confident, you cannot let somebody's opinion of you affect you that deeply. <laughs> Oh yes. I've seen so many men that approached a girl at the bar. She rejected them and they lashed back out on her with Oh, you're ugly anyways. What a weirdo do you need to be? I always say, stop giving a shit about what other people think of you. And so if it gets out that you're abusive, that you're treating girls like shit, that you are not respecting them, other people will find out and they will want to steer clear from you. And yes, opinions. Every personal development YouTuber has at least one video about how to not care what others think of you. And they always need to show their middle finger in the thumbnail. But the thing is, opinions are like assholes. Everybody has one. They're just opinions. They cannot hurt you. How often do we form opinions about stuff we don't know shit about? And so despite the fact that you broke up, a woman should at least respect you. Hey, it didn't work out, but he is a good guy. I do in fact respect him and I would tell my friend perhaps it would work out with you. It wasn't right for me, but I could see him being right for someone. Also, yeah, treat people with respect. Of course. If someone you hang out with is talking shit about someone who isn't there, then this person might talk shit about you when you're not there. Stay away from drama and energy vampires, give people the benefit of the doubt, and always own your mistakes, even if another person did everything wrong. Invest in yourself. I'm talking physically, emotionally, socially, financially. Become a high value man. Go to school, educate yourself, get a career. Become a successful person that other people can respect. I mean, think of it. You have two people that are equally attractive. One has made it financially. They have a great body. They've worked on themselves. They're a great communicator. They have ambition, work ethic, and are emotionally intelligent. Which of the two are you going after? I mean, really think about it. So the more work you can put into yourself, the more other people are going to see. Eventually, that's going to come out as being more confident. If you are confident, you're going to attract far more females than if you're not. Just think of it. You're successful. You have a great career. You worked on your body. Are you not going to be more positive? Are people not going to see the passion in your eyes, the fact that you put in all that work for decades to achieve what you have achieved. In comparison, you sit at home and play video games. Yep. Plants that don't grow, die. People too. Stagnation is death. If you don't like your results you have in life, change it. If someone else can do it, you can do it too. Men like to paint a picture of their dream girl. She needs to be sexy, healthy, funny, smart, ambitious passionate, full of life, and so on. And then they complain that they don't find one. But it always starts with us. If you want a woman that has certain qualities, then you need to have these qualities first. Start there, invest in yourself. You don't need to get a coach, but if you want to reach your goal faster, you should consider getting one. So yes, very mature points. And it's so nice to see that not everyone is lost in this red pill shit and has actually common sense. But what if you're a man, let's say 30, single, and you have a date scheduled very soon. Then watch this video next and make sure that you don't focus on the wrong things again so you can see her again.